Um, happy Sabbath, everyone, again. Uh, before we even go into the message, I want to th thank the church and thank the elders very much indeed uh, for the prayer. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. So thank you very, very much. Um, there are a few things I can definitely share with you now is that uh, um, last week we had a meeting with the elders and they, they prayed for me and with me and over me. They anointed me with oil. And I can, I can definitely tell you um, great things. Uh, I, I am feeling much, much better. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, much, much better. Uh, I, I say this, you know, I'm kind of not in the swamp, but I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, but I'm definitely much, much better. So I thank you very much indeed. I had, I had very little dizziness this week. I had the MRI done this week. Uh, and my doctor still wants to talk to me, but we, we know people here and there. And that they were able to look into the, the MRI and says that there's no new bleed besides what I've had before. So that's an encouraging thing, right? I know my, my brain is not bleeding again. Uh, I'm very, very grateful for that. So thank you. Uh, you keep on praying for us. Um, I Prayer, it's, it's something that I can never repay for your prayers. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about when uh, we were called to come to White Marsh, one of the concerns that I had in my mind is that, you know what? W will this church pray for us, for my family and I? Because we've been so blessed, so blessed. And, we, and uh, as soon as we met with the board and talked to the people and they talked highly about prayer and people started saying that they have been praying for us even before we came here, we could feel embraced by your love. So thank you very much. Never cease praying for us because I will always need it. Uh, trust me, we need prayers, but thank you. Uh, let us pray, shall we? Let's bow our hands. Father, we are about to open your word today. Some of us right now may be really hungry, physically hungry, but we first want to be fed spiritually. So bless us now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Just before we go, uh, there is something I'd like to, to tell you about. That uh, we, we met with the Inspiring Worship team. Which the, many board leaders are already aware of this. The board is going to discuss this. One of the things the board is going to discuss this next uh, Tuesday is that whether we're going to start putting the tithes and the offerings to the end of the service. So the deacons, some of the deacons are already aware of this. And again, we're still going to discuss with the board. We will notify you next week. But just would you like to give a heads up that eventually if we do this, there are several reasons why that we'd like to give it a try. Everything in the worship service, nothing is written in stone, but like to give it a try. Uh, having the offerings collected in the end of the service. When we do that, just be aware that the, the sermon will start earlier in the service. I know that sometimes people, a lot of people, sometimes they don't come around 11 o'clock or 10 to 11. They come 11 30, 11 40 ish. If we do that, the switch, the sermon will be a little bit earlier. I'd like you to, to encourage you to come for the whole service. Amen? All right, so you get the worship, the service. But again, I'm just sharing with you so you're aware of this, that we're about to discuss it. Nothing is voted on anything yet, but we're about to discuss it. Next week, we will report to you uh, whether this is going to go this direction or not. And, uh, and if it is, when it's going to take place, okay? All right? So now let's focus on the message. We, we, we started our, our journey to freedom on, on January 1st. And we decided to study for 40 days. The book of Exodus. Many of you are having the chance also to follow with, with Journey to Freedom, the devotional uh, that your pastor wrote in uh, 2016. One day, one, one chapter at a time for 40 days. And today is January 20th. We're halfway through the journey in the book of Exodus. Amen? How many of you are being blessed by the book of Exodus? Let me see. I know we have several people in the church that are having a chance. Amen. We also have people in our prayer meeting here. People are, or the men's ministry reading and then they're studying over the phone. So we are being blessed by this journey. And, and we learned that last week that, 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 that there's this theme in the book of Exodus about the two kings. Remember? One is the king of Egypt. The other one is the king of heavens. And we learned that if we want to take our spiritual life seriously, we have to understand that the Holy Spirit is passing down on earth. When He passes down our homes, our houses, our hearts, 
Will Jesus, will the Holy Spirit see the blood of the Lamb? That means that the things we do, the things we listen, we watch, the way we dress, the way we talk, the things we eat, and everything, it has to do with our salvation. Remember that, right? If you guys were here. So we prayed and made a decision last week, many of us, that we want to put the blood of Jesus on the doorposts of our homes. Today's topic, it's called The Three Things to look out for. Let me see if it, the, there you go. Three things to look out for in the context of the book of Exodus. You know, we also learned that the story of Exodus is not merely God taking his people out of slavery, but taking his slavery out of his Oh, you guys got it. Very good. So we, we learned this idea. They had a slave mindset. They were behaving like slaves. And it was hard just to get rid of that mindset. But we also learned that freedom is very costly, Emeka. It's probably the most costly thing. People take freedom from granted. Just think of this. How many of us receive things that we take for granted? Some of our kids take things for granted, don't they? Kids, right? Parents? We do. We do things. We do take things for granted. And it's hard for anybody to appreciate freedom that has not either fought for it or had to defend freedom. Our nation has had to battle and go to war many times so we could come to church today and enjoy a beautiful Sabbath morning. So we have to, we have to be thankful to God and thankful to the people who died and bled so you and I could enjoy freedom. Are you guys following me on this? Right? But, but, but here's the thing. The, when God set us free, now let's go into the Bible. When God set us free indeed, God wants to set us free. He does not want us to go back to being a slave. So when God set us free, there are three things we should what? Look out for. What am I talking about? Well, there are three weapons that the enemy uses. And you can trust me on this. The devil will, will use these weapons. Whether the three of them or maybe just one. He, you are going to be attacked. And here are three weapons he will throw at you. Benjamin, today you gave your life to Jesus. Beware. Be ready. Because there's three weapons the devil will throw at you. And every single person here, whether you're young or old, the devil will throw these weapons at you. The goal of these th three weapons is very simple. The devil wants you to go back to being a slave. The devil does not want you to be free, Adam. He wants you to just continue being, doing the things you were doing before. Because when you decide to follow God and move into a new life, Satan hates it. So again, these are the three things we should look out for. Let me see if this is working. Okay. So the first one I'd like you guys to remember is what? Fear. Fear. Everybody together? Fear. The second one is? Whining. Everybody together is what? Whining. And the third one is what? Regret. Everybody together? Reg regret. So now this thing is really going all over the place. So let me go back here. Okay. Fear, whining, and regret. Okay, so let's just recap a little bit what we've seen so far. So, so far we saw that the people of God had been enslaved in Egypt for many, many years. So they prayed, Lord, please save us. We don't want slavery anymore. God sent them a deliverer, Moses. Now Moses go and speak to Pharaoh. Hey, would you let my people go? And Pharaoh says what? No. Ten times, nine times. On the tenth time he says, okay, you guys go. So Pharaoh very soon just changed his mind because, well, God sent the last plague and they were, okay, now you guys go. I, know, I don't ever see you guys again. And, well, Israel thought, we're finally free. Now we're set free. Now we, we can celebrate our freedom. Let's just go and be free and, and be merry and do whatever we have to do. Well, not so fast. We know the story. It didn't take too long. They left Egypt. Now they're on, they're on the wilderness. They're on the, on the path to the promised land. And they first, they're about to encounter their very first obstacle. Their very first major issue, which was the red, what? The red sea was just right there. Behind them, it was the, the hosts of, 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 of Pharaoh. Right in front of them, it was the ocean of impossibilities. If you got, unless you have one million people, they are really good swimmers, right? You're not going to cross the ocean at all, period. Great. 
huge obstacle. So what I'd like to do, because today we're not going to be reading too many Bible texts, we're going to focus only on Exodus 14. I'm not putting the text on the screen. So if you guys have your Bibles, your apps, your tablets, your phone, go with me to Exodus chapter 14. Uh, Exodus maybe is your first time here. In the, in the Bibles, there are P, Bible uh, in front of you in the pews there. If somebody next to you has a Bible, you just say, excuse me, can I share with you, okay? You, and members will be willing to share the Bible. Exodus 14, Exodus is the second book in the Bible. Very easy to find. It's the second book and chapter, chapter 14, okay? So we're going to read a few passages here. But again, what are the three things to look out for? Everybody with me? What is the first one? What is the second? What is the third? Regret. Very good. So let's take a look now. So let's go to Exodus chapter 14. Are you there? Say amen. All right. So I'm going to read now verse 10. So when Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lift up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord so what is the first thing they're doing they lift up their eyes they saw they were coming and they did what they feared greatly they were terrified but why did they fear they lift up their eyes and they looked at what Pharaoh they looked at their past they looked at those who were coming from the past now now it continues verse 11 verse 11 says this they said to Moses It is because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? I mean, there were no graves in there. We're going to all die here, Moses. Are you serious? We might as well just die there. So what does it look like they're doing right now? They're whining. They're complaining. I mean, you just said you're free. You're free to run anywhere you go, but I mean, you have a problem. You're already doing what? Whining. Now, let's go again in the next verse now. Uh, it's going to be verse 12. Look, look at verse 12 now. It is not this what we said to you in Egypt. In other words, Moses, we told you this, man. Come on. Look what he says. This. Leave us alone that we may serve the whom? Just leave us alone. We are fine. Have you ever met people who are in trouble? I mean, they are in the woods deep down. And what do they say? I'm fine. Pride. I mean, they're like really bad, but they're, they're fine. Pride. And, and look how it continues. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the where? In the wilderness. So what they're doing right now? What does it look like they're doing now? They're regretting. Regretting the decision that they made to go and follow Jesus. Can you believe that? Now, let me say this. Just because God set you free, it does not mean you're not going to have hard times. Just because God wants to bless you and guide your life, it does not mean everything is going to be like a bed of roses. I know, I know, I know there are pastors and preachers who promote this. You are baptized in the waters, you know, you become a millionaire next day. Right? As long as you give the, your money to the church, their church, or that you're baptizing Jesus, you're not going to have any problems at all. Well, tell that to Jesus himself who hung on the cross. Right? So, I, I don't want to speak about this plastic, this disposable gospel that people think that I use Jesus and, you know, just get rid of him when I need it. We have to really see that and understand. We will have hard times in the Christian life. It's just a matter of time and when. I mean, I'm sorry to break this down to you. Maybe you heard that if you give your life to Jesus, all your problems will be gone. No, it's not the reality. The difference now you have a good partnership. God is with you. You're not alone on, on, on your journey. But you may be wondering, okay, what does he have to do with me? I see this story of Exodus. So, well, again, in Christian life, in life, any of us will have hard times. All right? We all are going to have hard times. But, but here's the thing what happens when, when it comes to fear. When we want to leave an old habit, Ijama, we have an old habit, we're going to get rid of this, now we're going to move into a new life. Don't we fear that we are going to fail if we have failed before? Think about that. All of us, we fear is the fear of failure. Nobody wants to fail again. We, ju we just don't. We just don't want to be defeated 
by fear. So we fear that our past is going to come back to haunt us. I mean, if you read again Exodus 14, 10, and the people of Israel, Chaz, they did what? They lift up their eyes and behold what? They saw whom? Did they see God the deliverer? Did, no, they saw whom? Pharaoh. Friends, listen to the pastor here. Your past, your failures, your mistakes, the, the things that enslaved you before, they will always come back to haunt you. And as long as you keep looking to your past, you'll never see the great future that God has in store for you. Ever. If you focus on your past, this is it. Pharaoh in this story represents our past mistakes. Pharaoh represents the issues we suffered in life, our past addictions, those messed up relationships we got involved in, and now we have to, we regret so much. And now any new relationship, any new trial, any new job, we fear that how that thing happened will happen what? Again. The fear of the past. The fear of failure. How many times we, we, we give our lives to Jesus and I see this happening and I don't want this to happen to Benjamin or any of our young people or anybody who's given their lives to Jesus. They give their life to Jesus and, and they start a new walk with Christ. The first obstacle that they find, they kind of give up because their past comes back to haunt them. Now, how does this really happen? Well, how many, how many of us have lost friends, what we call friends, because we became Christians? Just think about it. People that were hanging out with you all the time, wherever you go, they were there party time. Woohoo! Call me out. Now, you want to follow God and do something meaningful to your life? They are nowhere to be seen. What about that when you, you know, when you got money, everybody's there with you, yeah, in your house, and everybody's traveling with you, but when you were like dead broke, where are your friends? Knowing you're so poor you can't even pay attention, <laughs> right? And nobody's there? Doesn't that happen? It happens. So, so and before we notice this, our young people, they make decisions for God, for Jesus Christ, and we have to encourage them. We have to be right there to support them because it is easy to be a Christian here in church. But out there in the college, University of Maryland, in a new job, or wherever you go, we are the oddballs. Well, like with the weirdos. So it's very easy for people of our past say, Benjamin, you being baptized? What? <laughs> ben? In the, are you kidding me? Our past. Come back. Ijama singing a group? I know Ijama did. You here? People will come back to haunt us. So, and, 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 and Satan will place those things in, and so we think that I cannot come and sing. I cannot come and How dare do I get baptized and give my life to God because then everybody else from my past is going to come and, 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 and bring all this trash. He will be a total mess. I will be ashamed of my own sins. Are you, are you here, church? Are you following me? Are you following me? The past our sins, our faults will try to come back. Maybe you grew up in a home that people said you never amount to anything. You are a piece of trash. Then in this home, you finally find Christ go to church and people in this home begin now attacking you. It says, are you going to church? Oh, now you'll, you think you're holy now, right? Oh, oh, you're better than everybody else. You start being attacked simply because you want to follow God. And then from within the home, they start looking at you and say, look at you, you used to do that, you used to do that, and now look at all you, you think you changed? You think anybody's going to believe you? You failed before, you fail again, and you fail forever. Am I, am I, you guys are awfully quiet. Am I just preaching to the air here, or that you guys actually experience this? Amen. Your past would always come back to haunt you until you understand what to do with it. Just because you have failed in the past, it does not mean you will fail again. Just because you were an addict in the past, it does not mean you will be an addict in the future. There is power in the blood of God. Many times in our lives, we give our lives to Jesus, but as soon as we step in the wilderness, we're free from his slavery, but the moment we encounter the first obstacle, we look into our past and think that our past is going to overcome us. 
Now let me ask a question here. What happened to Pharaoh and his army? What happened on that day, on that night? What happened to them? They, well, they, well, they drowned. They died. So let me ask you then other questions. Is it worth it? Why would it bother to listen to the haunting threats? The haunting voice of a drowning Pharaoh. Why do they bother to listen to the empty threats of a defeated army? The Bible says that our sins are buried where? In the depths of the sea. And along with Pharaoh, along with your past, along with your, uh, all your past mistakes, your addictions, pornography, the ways you did things, every, everything when you give your life to Christ is buried and Jesus buries it. So they'll just leave it out there. Don't listen to the haunting voice of a drowning Pharaoh. Don't let your past dictate your future. Because as long as you fear your past, you never see the glorious future that God has for you. <coughs> so let me just try to make it clear here. Some examples. Husband and wife, they married for 20 years. They can't stand each other anymore. At all. They've been living in separate rooms for five years. Don't even say hello to each other. Come to church. Now they think, oh, we got to separate. Everybody's going to be talking about us, you know, all this, you know. But they finally decide to go with it. Time goes by, and they come to their sense, no, we got to make this work. We got to make it. And they prayed, and they prayed, and, and they start working. And then some people may say, what, you're going to go back to him? Are you serious? Are you going to back to her after all that happened? Are you really going to go back to them? And then these two people now begin looking to their past and thinking just because they were, they, they, they were defeated, in the, they were slaves in the past, they think they cannot be free in the future. Don't listen to the haunting voice of a drowning Pharaoh. If that happens, you said, there goes a drowning Pharaoh. Or, 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 maybe, or maybe somebody had their first marriage. It happens. I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, this is this reality. People don't like talking about it, but this is a reality. Okay? People marry. And they make mistakes, terrible mistakes, and then they divorce. And somebody around the marriage, you know, finally come to their senses as I sin, and they and they, and they repent, and they and, and 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 they ask God's forgiveness. They live with God, and and circumstances of life kind of allows them to get remarried because of circumstances. The other part, the other person finds someone else, whatever. And now they want to start a new life. They want to start afresh. They've get, they've been given the green light. And our people from the past, or even ourselves, are all. But I failed in my first marriage. My, the only thing good about my first marriage were my kids. I'm not going to succeed anymore. And you start listening again to the what? The haunting voices of what? A drowning Pharaoh. If God has forgiven you, if you have repented, and God has given a new path, a new way, don't fear the drowning pharaohs. You have failed in the past, and you think you're going to fail in the future. What do you say to that? There goes what? A drowning pharaoh. Don't listen to the empty threats of a defeated army. Now, <clears throat> the bottom line is this here, guys, is this. Don't hold yourself hostage to your past. Don't do that. You don't have to. Jesus has forgiven you. Amen. The next point. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's in Exodus 14, 11. It's the, it's the whining part. If you guys can move over to the next slide. For some reason, this is not working well. Thank you. And again, you guys can go back there. Uh, <coughs> Exodus, doesn't it look like what we do? Right? <laughs> whining. Right? So, uh, Exodus 14, 11. <coughs> so, God says, <coughs> They said to Moses, it is because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Now, let me say this. We have a natural tendency to whine and complain, don't we? Let's just be honest here. Nobody likes whiners, but we all whine. <laughs> have you noticed, right? We do that all the time. Right? So we have to understand that we will naturally want to whine. We think usually that we work the hardest, we sleep the least, and the, and the life has been the hardest upon us. I mean, everybody else is fine, but my life, I mean, is the hardest upon everybody else. The problem with whining is this, that whining takes the focus where it should be. You know, if you keep on whining, it's not going to get anything better. I mean, as long as you whine and come, you know, children sit down and, yeah, yeah, right? 
does he help anything? He really doesn't. I mean, you, you, the parent might want to do things quickly, right? But when you grow up, and now you're an adult, you can sit on a, on a church pew and whine as long as you want. You know, we're going to call the police. <laughs> because you think you're out of your mind. Whining would not help you to go anywhere. Whining doesn't help. Now, in Egypt, they had a reason to cry because they were slaves. Now, when they were free, they had no reason to whine. But they found a way to whine. <coughs> and I have told you this before. I told you this before. God will put an end to our weeping, not to our whining. There are people who whine so much, so much, I can guarantee you, sunshine, if they will go to heaven, they will find something to whine about. <laughs> Do you guys know anybody like that? Oh, Jesus, it's 15,000 years here, you know. Oh, my goodness, you know, we worship you too much. <laughs> they always will find something to whine about. Always. Can you believe that? No, but in church, you know, it's funny church. People say in the church, the church grows too fast. Others say the church is not growing fast enough. The music in church is dead. Others say what? The music in church is what? Too loud. It's too worldly. People they know, let me, hey, hey, what are the, the AC guys, Calvin and, and Randy? It's too hot in the church. Oh, it's too cold in the church. You know, no, you can never please people. No, no, not even Jesus pleased everybody, much less we can. No, it's never going to happen. People think, oh, I know our children are not coming to church and we complain about it. But I say, we have too many children. It's too much noise in the church. You see that? Pastor is preaching too long. Pastor is preaching too little. The worship service went too long. The worship service is no longer enough. Yeah, we just whine and whine and whine and whine and whine. I mean, it's amazing. You know, being a pastor is funny. <laughs> it's funny business. You know, it's, it's hard in some areas, but sometimes I got to have a laugh. Because you know what? <laughs> what I have discovered as being a pastor is that the whiners are usually the, the not doers. <laughs> right? The whiners are the not doers. Why? Because, you know, they, they have an opinion about everything. They can, they, they know, they, they, they can pick up the Bible and have a theological comment about any, virtually anything in church. If it's not according to their will, they just whine about it. When the church meets to make important decisions like we did last Sabbath, they are nowhere to be what? Uh, well, to be seen, but they're the first ones to complain about. Ah, now, <clears throat> maybe I'm, I'm shaking some people today, right? I'm sure, but it happens. As long as you keep on whining, first of all, the church is not here to please the people. I told you from my very first sermon, I'm not a babysitter pastor. I'm an evangelist pastor. I'm a leader pastor. We are supposed to grow spiritually together and bless our community. So we cannot be sitting here just trying to please everybody else because I will drive you nuts and you will drive me nuts. And we will drive each other nuts. Like the people of Israel. They were free, but they know what? They were not doing anything. They just put the blood on the, door, the lamp, on the doorpost. And now you're just walking and just get there. Now there's an ocean there. And the armies come and says, oh, you know. And just whine. Friends, with freedom, there is great privileges. But also comes up important, crucial responsibilities. If you're a young person, you want to move out of your parents' basement or their bedroom, you don't want to long, no longer live under their rules, you might just as well learn how to live to earn a living. You have to pay your rent, you're going to have to pay for your food, cook your food, go to work, come back from work, and make sure you don't lose your job over like little stuff. Yeah, it's not easy to really be free indeed. Many adults, how many of you guys here wish you were still children? Uh -huh, yeah, there we go, right? You got nothing to worry about. You don't pay any bills. You know, you sit there. Yeah, they come food in your mouth. You know, they even change your diapers like I do with Gabriel. I mean, life is easy. You know, no concerns, no worries. So freedom, with freedom comes really great responsibility. So, okay, so what is the first, first weapon of Satan? What is the first one? Yeah. What is the second one? Whining. So what is the third one now is? Regret. So we go now to Exodus 14, 12. And look what happens here now. So again, is this not the word that we have told you in Egypt? Saying, 
Let us leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. <coughs> so you have, you have to follow the order. First, they fear. Then they begin what? Whining. If you whine for long enough and long enough, eventually you are going to regret. Regret they have ever took taken the decision to follow God. Regret the decision of following Jesus Christ. When we feel the heat of the wilderness, we miss the whip of our masters. And this is one of the worst things that can happen to a Christian walk. So Benjamin and anybody else in this church here today who has given your life to Christ, the moment will come in your life, sooner or later, that we will wonder if you did the right thing. Was it worth it giving my life to Christ? Was it worth it? That's why Jesus says, you know what? <coughs> if you're not willing to leave your parents and everything else to follow me, you're not worthy of my being my disciple. Every day we have to take up our cross. I mean, it's, I'm sorry, it's there. It's not really popular nowadays to say that Christianity is hardcore, but it is. It is so sooner or later we will have hard times. So look out. Pastor is not a prophet. Pastor is a pastor. But this is a prophetic warning. We will be shaken. And the moment we are shaken, and some of us are being shaken right now, if we keep on looking to our past and listening to the empty threats of a defeated army, if we keep on whining about everything else about our lives, our work, our job, the weather is too hot, too cold, too soggy, I mean, whatever, and then we start regretting ever making the decision to follow Jesus Christ. There are people who accept Jesus and regret not because they have to drive to church on Sabbath morning. Oh, I gotta get up now. Before I could sit and watch TV, now I gotta go to church. Seriously? This is a privilege. <clears throat> I may be, I'm not saying that I will, but I may be going to a Muslim country this year to talk to Muslim leaders about the faith. And it, has, it might have to be a little secret because they're not allowed to go and worship God like we do. The moment we start regretting what God has done for us, we lose our identity. But let me see how this happens a little more clear. Maybe God set you free. You accept Jesus. You're going to be faithful now in your tithe, in your offerings. And you give your honest tithe and a, and, and, and a loving offering. And now the bills start to pile up. How does that look like to an amazing God? God, you know what? I want to serve you, but you got to help me out here. What, what about you decide to honor God in your marriage? I've seen this happening. The person comes to church, is baptized, I want to honor God in my marriage. And the spouse, two weeks later, is filing for divorce. How would that look like? What about you accept Jesus and you lose your job? You come to Jesus and you lose, your, you, 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 you lose a son, a daughter. You get sick. You get hard-pressed with life. And the devil will throw everything at you to destroy you. Yes, it can happen many, many times. How many times do you accept Christ and we find ourselves in a catch-22 situation? We follow God. We, it's going to be a little bit painful sometimes. But we think, oh my goodness, maybe I've made the, I've made the worst decision ever. Why should I ever, ever go Gone to have gone to that church. Why should I have accepted Christ in my life? So, friends, here lies the, the most important thing. Again, <clears throat> when Israel was in that situation, they feared. Why did they fear again? Because they lift up their eyes and they looked what? Where? They looked at Pharaoh. They looked at their past. So when we find ourselves in the future during hard times, some of you are being hard-pressed right now to be faithful to God. You're being hard-pressed. Don't look to your past. Don't look. Don't listen to the haunting voice of a drowning Pharaoh. Trust God. Look to Jesus and move forward. Bad days will come. They will. And when you begin to wonder whether you've made the right decision or not, remember this. Freedom, it's a journey. It's not an event. You may have been set free right now, but it is your decision upon you to make the decision to follow God wherever you go, no matter what happens.
Jesus can burst the cells of our prisons. He can break the, sh the shackles that hold us down. But until we walk out of that cell and follow Him, we are still prisoners within our own cells. Amen. Friends, I'm wrapping this up. I'm wrapping this up now. I'm going to land this plane here. Very soon. I know it's late. I know some of you are tired. I know the kids are restless. I can hear them. If Gibbs were here, you probably would be in the mother's room as well. But let me tell you this here. This is serious stuff. If we, if we want to grow spiritually, if we want 2018 to be like a year that will make a difference in your life, the first thing you have, you cannot fear your past. Don't fear your past mistakes. Don't fear what you've done last night. Move forward. Don't whine about the circumstances. Things will happen. You may cry. You may weep in the Lord. But don't whine. Don't just move forward. But let me show here what happens then. It's amazing. Go again to Exodus chapter 14 as we as you're wrapping up. <clears throat> I, want you, I want you to, to see what happens here. It's powerful. It's very powerful. Exodus chapter 14. We, we read now so far down to verse 12. Now we're going to read verse 13. <clears throat> so after they feared, after they whined, and after they did what they regretted, now look what Moses says. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you what? See today, shall, you shall never see them what? Again. <clears throat> the Lord will fight for you. And you have only to be what? Silent. In other words, shut up. Thank you very much. No, it's not, you know, politically correct, you know, to say that. But, you know, just be silent. Just shh, shh. Don't worry. Don't shh. Stand firm and see what the Lord is going to do. I mean, this is what Moses said. He's just saying, can you guys just be quiet, please? That was Moses. And I, let, let me just, you know, be very colloquial. Can you just please shut up? Everybody in my ears. Now, look what happens then. Verse 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to do what? To go forward. Go forward. Stop whining. Stop crying. Be silent and do what? Move forward. Friends, we're coming to moments in our lives that we have to make a decision for Jesus Christ. And, and the reality is this, Ben, you're a young man. Satan will try to make you fear your past. Satan will try to make you whine. He will do whatever he can so you will regret the decision you made here today. And for everybody else who is thinking about it or everybody who is going through this right now, don't fear, don't whine, and don't regret. What do you do? Keep quiet and do what? Move forward. Move forward in faith. Go forward. And you will see the deliverance that the Lord has in store for us. It's time for us to stop looking to our past. It's time for us to stop looking to the oceans of impossibilities. And listen to the pastor. There are times in which God is going to make you walk around your problems. There are times in which God is going to remove the mountains of your problems. But there are times you're going to go right through it. Like in the Red Sea. When you come to the other side, you will look to everybody else. You're going to look at Pharaoh. You're going to look at your past. You're going to look all your past mistakes. And what is going to happen to it? You'll be drowned in the Red Sea. <clears throat> Leave it at there. It's time for us to stop listening to empty threats of a defeated army. I want to call the praise team now as we're going to sing together. But if today is a special moment because you was baptism. And I know, I know it's past time. I know some of you guys are hungry. But I cannot close this service here today without giving you the opportunity. <clears throat> Maybe there is somebody here today that is, that is in a moment of fearing that the past is going to come back to haunt them. Maybe somebody here today is thinking, I whine too much. And you look at your life and you're always whining. Or maybe somebody here today has even regretted 
to come to Jesus Christ. Maybe you regretted to, mar to have married the wife that you married. Maybe you regretted to have married the, your husband. You regretted the career that you have chosen right now. Friend, do you want to move forward? We are going to stand up to sing, There is a fountain where we can go. But if there's anybody here today that would like to move forward in faith, no regrets, no whining, no fear. You want to give Jesus your life. You want to give your life to Jesus and trust and surrender the Lord Jesus Christ. I will make the appeal. Maybe somebody here today wants to be baptized. Maybe you have never been you considering that. Or rebaptism. As we sing, don't be afraid. Don't whine. Don't regret. Come to the front and we'll pray especially for you. Your baptism doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Or your rebaptism, whatever commitment you want to have with the Lord. If there is anything hold you down, if you're still listening to the voices of a, of a defeated Pharaoh, and you want to move forward in faith, as we stand up to sing, you can come to the front, no matter who you are, and we have a special prayer for you. Let us stand up together. And if the Lord is speaking to you again, come to the front and we'll pray especially for you.
are safe to see no more. And I thank you for those who have come to the front here. And this is the decision you are making in your heart. Remember, you don't have to look to your past. You don't have to listen to the haunting threats, the haunting voice of a defeated Pharaoh, of the defeated army. Today begins a new life in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I want to pray especially for those who have come. Is there anyone else that you want to go forward, but there is something still holding you down? Trust me, when Jesus comes, there will be no regrets for taking this decision today. Is there anybody else? I still want to give you the time to come and we pray especially for you. Anyone else? So let us pray. If our group who came to the front, let's just get a little bit closer together. <clears throat> Amen. Come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good to see you. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, you are Lord of mercy. You are Lord of love. Lord, we do not want to fear our past. We do not want to whine about our present. And do not want to regret about our future. So we pray that you surrender our lives and help us at times even to be silent and be quiet. But help us to go forward with our spiritual lives with no fears of what's going to happen because we know that you are going to take care of us, oh Father. I pray for every single person up here up front, those that I just met. I pray for the, young, the younger ones who are here. I, I pray for little Noah. I pray for Marcielli. I pray for, for, for Micah. I want to pray for Daniel and for Mark, and, and especially them that want to give their lives to the Lord in an early age. I pray your spirit will continue to guide them. And everybody else here, Lord, if we are here up front, it's because we want to move forward. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.